Rhiannon, and welcome to South Carolina. Rhiannon, I'm abroad right now. Hi Rhiannon, I don't normally do this thing on this channel, I usually do this thing on my other channel, but I'm traveling today and so I figure, what the heck, let's talk about traveling games. What that means is it's hard to game when you're traveling. I'm of the opinion that a good travel game doesn't actually need to be a travel quote game. I should probably open quote before that. There's something about travel game that just implies to me simple, boring, non-strategic, random chance, boring, small, cheap components. Because of that, I feel like today it was appropriate that I talk to you about traveling with games. Not travel games specifically, because travel games aren't always the best traveling games, if that makes sense, but more the fact that you can travel with games. Any game can become a travel game, just simply by changing its packaging, for the most part. Yeah, some of them require more table space, and some of them can't actually be shrunk down that small. Like, for example, a six-fold board, mm, not gonna pack very well in a backpack. There are a variety of categories for travel games that you would need a travel game for. First and foremost is generally pack size. How much of the space you have available does the game take up in your pack? Card games tend to be smaller. Board games, depending on the board and how it folds, tend to be larger. The second thing you need to take into consideration for travel games, of course you know this, Rhiannon, is the board size or the play area size. How much space does it take up on a table? Do you even need a table? Card games tend to travel better than board games in general because while well, cards are easier to pack, they're easier to repackage, and you can fit a lot of card games into one of the large card boxes. I would show my hands, but this is my lunch. It's a very expensive lunch because airport. And that works really well, though you would have to repackage it. it would be One Night Ultimate Werewolf. One Night Ultimate Werewolf from Visor Games. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce names. We all know this. One Night Werewolf is a great game because it requires very little table space. The hardest part with that game of traveling is you kind of need more people. So it's kind of a game that you can take when you're visiting relatives or going to see people. It's a good icebreaker. Um, the hardest part on that one is you have to make sure that everybody can get around the table and get to the cards so stuff can happen. One Night Ultimate Werewolf, if you haven't heard about it, is different from Ultimate Werewolf or just Werewolf because there's only one night of it. So you don't have that exclusion thing where people get eliminated from the game and then have to wait. Instead, you just have one night, you have hidden werewolves, and people have to figure out who they're going to kill. And that's it. If they kill one werewolf, at least one werewolf, the villagers win. If both werewolves survive, or however many werewolves there are, survive and no werewolves die, then the werewolves win. Not exactly ideal. It's a fun game, it's really light and quick to pack, and the cardstock cards are super sturdy. I actually have it in a Ziploc bag, one of the TSA approved three quart or quart size bags, and I have tons of extra space in this bag. One of my favorite games to travel with, and even has a travel version that I actually like, would be Quirkle. Quirkle is a tile placement game, kind of if Scrabble and Uno had a baby, I guess? Every piece has a shape that has a color on it, and there are six shapes and there are six colors. And when you place a tile, you have to place a tile adjacent to another tile that shares either that color or that shape. You can't place a tile next to a tile that shares both because every row can only have a unique set of shapes. So you can't have a blue diamond and then five tiles down have another blue diamond. It just doesn't work that way. The pieces are small, resilient, and pack really well. And the travel version of the game comes in this nice little zipped cushy case, which you can actually fit three of Daniel Solis's games into and then travel with, so that's really convenient. So yeah, Quirkle. It's really good. And if you can find the travel version, it's even more travel friendly, which is amazing. The main version, the tiles are kind of bigger and larger and heavier, so unless you're checking a bag, I probably wouldn't recommend traveling with that one. Ugh. Speaking of Daniel Solis, have you played any of Daniel Solis's card games? Daniel Solis is a designer that is really active on Twitter and has an amazing blog about his design process. He had a game last year that was on Kickstarter that funded really well called Bell the Ball. This year he's doing a game series where he's designing one new game every month and every game is a card game and they're all really fun and well designed and they have cool art and you can get them on drivethroughgames.com. So yeah, there's a quick look at the travel games that I like to bring with me and specifically that I brought with me on this trip. So what travel games do you like to travel with? Or better yet, what games do you like to travel with that aren't travel games? I'm gonna go back to working on some really important, awesome projects, which is why I have a hotel room all to myself. You know, those kids, I love my nieces, but they just constantly wanna play and 
I just, I need some quiet alone space to really concentrate and work. Do you want to build a snowman? Let it go, let it go. 